Hello everyone, I've decided to make a YouTube channel dedicated to Chemistry 1440 or General Chemistry 1 at Oakland University. The professor I had was Dr. Jennifer Tillinger and I had in the fall term of 2023. This series or this channel will most likely be dedicated to chemistry, um, physics, and the possible future, possible organic chemistry for I'm a bio major, whatever classes big sciences I take, but I will be posting for general chemistry. This series will include our lecture quizzes we had, chapter quizzes, as well as the practice exams, as well as my real exams I will be sharing and practicing with all of you. So let's get started. So the first day of class or lecture, we usually dealt with like solid, liquid, gas, like indefinite, definite, all the basics of that. But then what pops up usually on many quizzes or exams is significant figures. So looking at this first one, we have 1.750. And the thing with significant figures is we want to look at where the zeros are. That is the big takeaway from all of this. So in this, we can tell that we have a decimal. And the zero is technically trailing since it's behind and not leading. A leading would be in front of the decimal. But in this, we have a training zero and i wrote a little chart right here this is a very helpful hint i think from what i've found and studied from so if we have a trailing zero and it's decimal we know that that zero is significant so with that being said let's count our significant figures so we have one two three and four remember the zero is significant because it is a decimal and it is a trailing zero just like I stated right here, which is very helpful to know, I believe. So in this, we have four significant figures. Next one, we have 0 0.00710. This one is a little bit tricky. We are dealing with the decimal still, but we have both leading and trailing zeros. So going back to our chart, we know that leading zeros do not count, especially in decimals. So we can take away these. These do not count. But we have our, th we have possibly three here. We have we have two for sure. But then we go back to our little chart. Trailing zeros in a decimal are significant, which in this case it is. So we have one, two, three, three sig figs right here. Next we have twelve thousand one hundred and ten, which now this is a comma completely different, which I have also provided a little key right here. Now, in this case, it's basically the opposite of decimals. Trailing zeros are not significant. It is the leading zeros that are significant. So, if we go here, we have a comma. We have one, two, three, four. And this, fi this fifth uh, number does not count because, remember, it is a comma and it is a trailing zero. In commas, trailing zeros are not significant. So, in this one, we have four sig figs. Next one, we do have a pretty big hefty one, which... It is, it is a bit tricky, I will say that myself. So, we are dealing with another comma, and we know that trailing zeros do not count. So, anytime you see a trailing zero, which this is the guy right here, trailing zero right here, this is out. But, say, this is what you want to think. I know it's a bit confusing to think of it. The decimal is always going to be here, right? See how the um, zeros, these zeros right here, are actually the leading zeros so those are significant in the commas so that's what the takeaway is so we have one two and these zeros do count since they are leading zeros in a comma three four five six this one does not because it is a trailing zero in a comma trailing zeros are not significant so in this case we have a total of six sig figs Moving on to the next one, this is going over more sig figs, which basically it's PEMDAS, and I've included a little key right here. So with adding subtracting, you want to go to the lowest decimal place, which I will show you in a moment. And with multiplying and division, you want to have the least amount of sig figs given or provided. So starting with the first one, we have, actually it's Quite a simple one. So let's first start with the parentheses, of course, because PEM does. So we have 8.3 minus 2.5, and I get 5.8, which is 
which adding subtracting we go to the lowest decimal place and this is technically the lowest decimal place already because it, it is in the tenths place so 5.8 can really just stay since that's the lowest it can go in the decimal value then pem does again we have to multiply this by the 10.2 and with multiplying and division we go with the lowest amount of sig figs so if i do this we have three sig figs two sig figs which we're going to with the least amount so we would go with two sig figs in this situation so let's do it let's multiply this out we have 5.8 times the 10.2 i get a 59 0.16 but remember we want the least amount of sig figs so we just want 59 so we don't have to worry about this right here so once we have the 59 now we're moving on we have the uh plus 50.266 which we will do that right now so and remember with adding subtracting you want to go with the le least or the lowest amount of decimal places and in this case, it was just a whole number. So that is what we will be going up to, really. So we have 59 plus 50.266. And I get a 109.266. But remember how we wanted adding, subtracting. We go to the least amount of decimal places. This one has no decimal places. So that is what we will do. Oops, I'm sorry about that. So we will just keep it as 109 because... That's the lowest decimal place it can go up to since the 59 was the lowest decimal place we can go to. Moving on to the next one, we have somewhat of the same one. So basically, let's start all over again with PEMDAS. Okay, so I get on the top, I come out with 0 0.912. And remember, with uh, adding, subtracting, lowest decimal place, which 3, 3, that's what the calculation came out to be. So we are fine with that. Over 5.348. And remember, this is division. So this comes out to be 0 0.17053. Well, and it continues on. I'm just going up to that to save time. But remember, we want to go with multiplying and dividing the least amount of sig figs. In this case, we have three. In this case, we have four. So, of course, we want three sig figs. Thus, if we go to our answer, we are going to cut it off at three sig figs. Rounding, which you should know at this point, really, it's if you're in a college level. <laughs> so, we round to 0 0.171, and that is your answer right there. Uh, okay, for this, we have to find the equivalence of 151.4 Celsius on the Fahrenheit scale. And usually on an exam or a quiz, uh, actually, I'm sorry, on quizzes and lecture quizzes, we actually have to, like, memorize. But on a actual exam, it will be given, of course. But it's always good to know, I think. So, if we have Celsius, we can just plug the Celsius into this equation right here, really. And... That's basically how simple it is. <laughs> so if we have F equals 9 fifths in parentheses is the 151.4 plus 32. And give me one moment and I will get right back to you guys with this calculation. So I come out with 272.52. Plus the 32. And I get a total of 304.52. And the thing I've always been taking away from this class is however many sig figs we start with, since we have 4 in here, that is how much we're going to end with. So we take 4, and since the 2 cannot be rounded up, we just end up with 304.5 Fahrenheit. That's simple. And our last one includes density, which density is um, mass over volume or grams over milliliters, which we will see throughout this course a lot of that, really. Or it's just, it's more so in the beginning, but you will see how the um, metric units 
that correlate with one another. So with that being said, determine the density of the unknown liquid given with 36.185 grams and 30.05 milliliters must be the correct unit as well as the significant figures. So if you go to our problem right here, density is grams over milliliters or mass over volume. Mass is just grams, volume is milliliters. That will become very like second nature once you begin to do more practice problems in this course. So let's set this up. So if we want to find density, density equals, and it's grams over volume, I mean grams over milliliters, I'm sorry, which it is 36.185 over the volume or the milliliters, which is 30.05. And the thing is, what I like to do is, like, just always, like, keep your, like, even though it's not your final answer, always keep your units, like, on that number so you don't, like, lose track of what unit goes with what number. Because I have mistaken that before, not on an exam, but on practice quizzes, and it's it's not that fun. But going back, going forward, I mean, the density, our calculation comes out to density equals 1.204. 159, and this is where I usually just cut it off since we have five sig figs here and four sig figs here. We are going to go with the lowest amount of sig figs, in this case four. So we cut it off at the four, and we actually end up with density equals 1.204 grams over milliliters. And that is your final answer since the density form is grams over milliliters, and that is exactly what we found. I hope you enjoyed this video and there will be many more to come. Thank you so much for